Hi, I'm Guy. Welcome to my how to do various things in animation slash comics slash I'm going to be an artist. Dang it. YouTube thing. I'm old. So this is my get off my lawn, except I want you on my lawn because I want you to learn all these things. So get back on my lawn. YouTube thing. Okay, so what I have here for those of you who are wondering, is a Photoshop canvas, but I wouldn't worry about the fact that I'm doing a Photoshop canvas. The only reason I'm doing a Photoshop canvas is because I learned that with with Windows, I can do an Xbox thing, which allows me to capture stuff, and I could do this on paper. And actually, I probably would have done this on paper, but then I would have had to have used two cameras, and then you couldn't have seen me look at you and go... So... Because that's what I'm going to do, because I'm old, and I'm grumpy, and I'm old, and I'm cranky, and that's the way it goes. So, you know, get over it, and that's the way it goes. So, I already did one of these once, and it didn't record, because stupid and stuff. So I'm doing it again, which irritates me. So I'm already starting off cranky. So if you want to be an artist, I think that one of the most important things that people forget is that art is a reflection of life. And I think that that's like one of those things that everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me tell you a story. And this is one of those, oh, he's going to tell a story. So you can either reach down at the bottom there and fast forward until I wave at you. And then I'm, that's when you know I'm done with the story. Or you can sit here and go get a coffee and listen to my stories and that's fine or you can get off my YouTube lawn because this is my YouTube channel and I'm gonna tell stories because I'm old get off my lawn and if you don't like it YouTube lawn it's like digital grass totally when I first started getting into art I went to CU Boulder Colorado University in Boulder and I went there and I got a digital art or I got a digital art. I got an art degree or I started to get an art degree. But then I was like, no, nah, I already know this and I'm really too smart for this. And stuff. I was 18 and I was stupid. So I quit and I left the degree. And frankly, that was a dumb move. And I had to go back to college. Now, it's not a dumb move to leave college. That's not a dumb move. You can leave college or not leave college. Some people, that's a smart move to be in college. Some people, it's not a smart move. Totally up to you. What was a dumb move was deciding that I knew what I was talking about. That was the dumb move. Because I don't. And neither do you. And you know what? I'm old and I still don't know what I'm talking about. So why are you here? I don't know. Somebody told me to do this. Somebody told me to do this. No, I, we don't ever know what we're talking about. I mean, really, in the end, we don't ever know what we're talking about. We never know. We're just stuck here. So <laughs> the best thing I can do is pass what I know to you. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to pass what I know to you. And what I know is a conglomeration of things that people have taught me. And so I went back to school because I needed to, and I got an animation degree. And I feel like the animation degree helped me become a better comic book artist. Why? Because I like animation. Now, I employ the animation, certainly, in my art, but yeah. So, anyway. So here's what I've done. I like this pose. I'm going to show you how to employ this pose in something resembling a comic book thing that somebody had asked me, how is it you get your proportions right? How do you get everything squared away? Things like that. I'm going to show you basics 101. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of things that kind of need to be done in sort of a basics idea. Um, things that I've noticed that many artists make pitfalls on that have been corrected by a lot of people. I picked a picture that I got from MJ Random Stock from DeviantArt. 
I love getting stock pictures from DeviantArt. They are extraordinarily useful. This had little nipples in it, so I blacked out the little nipples so that people wouldn't freak out and like get completely and totally unglued because nipples apparently offend people. Um, so I'm going to add a layer here, and this will be my blue line layer. Some people also call this underdrawing, and that's okay. Underdrawing, blue line, it doesn't really matter. So what I learned, and the reason why I had to redo this entire thing, was that if I pull these pictures out and don't have this, then the little recording thingy records only Photoshop and my mouse wandering around, but will not actually record the canvas. And I thought, well, that's nice. So I had to merge this with the canvas. So what we have here is a standard 11 by 17 picture with an, ex an additional 11 by 17 on the left, which I would ultimately trim out. I actually wouldn't have it. Usually I'd have them side by side, but that's not going to happen. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this. There are a couple of things that most artists fail to do. The one major thing that most artists fail to do is um, assess perspective. And the perspective on almost all comics is extraordinarily dynamic and extreme. The perspective in this picture, if you look at this picture and we break this picture down, the perspective is really not very extreme per se because it was taken with a normal photography lens, probably I would say a 35 millimeter, maybe maybe he put it at 55 millimeters, but either way, the perspective is not that dramatic. We'll look at it here. We've got kind of the ground plane there. That's the background. And we can see, you know, kind of everything kind of goes back to this ground plane here. And so the focal points here, but really, you know, you look at her body and you look at how it's sort of there. The, the, the vanishing point on the perspective of her is not right here. This is not the vanishing point on her. It doesn't, things don't go back to that vanishing point. They go back to a vanishing point that's way off the paper. What is a vanishing point, Guy? I'm glad you asked. Um, a vanishing point is where all of the perspective of an, of an item goes. <coughs> Excuse me. Gosh, I feel a general grievous. Um, when you have it, when you have an object that is in 3D, it all all the lines will go to a vanishing point. So the vanishing point is how we will do a 3D object or something like that. The problem is that people don't understand. The people also go to a vanishing point. And so what I'm going to do is show you the magic of drawing human beings. Humans will start with what I call movable masses. And I don't, they're, they're actually not me calling them that. A guy named Bridgman called them that a long time ago in the 1800s. But he breaks down the human body and we'll break down our lovely lady over here, our lovely future war girl, breaks her down into three movable masses because there are three parts of her body that are really dynamically moving at any given point in time. There's the hips, which is one movable mass right here. There's the chest, which is another movable mass. And there's the head. Those are the three major masses of a human body. And we kind of break them down to give like an idea of where things are going. In this particular body, we can see that this mass is facing this way, this mass is facing this way, and so is this mass. So we can kind of see where these masses are going, right? I mean, we've got them kind of going in a good way. Oh, I just drew on the page. That's nice of me. How nice of me. But if we were to zoom in here, we could probably even like block these in to some degree, right? If we were to take and say, like put her head in a square, we could put her head 
in this square right here. There we go. Sorry, you put your head in a square. It's in a little square like that. Facing this way, going like that. Put a little arrow, show that we're going that way. Ooh, I can niche. Okay. And then we can see that her chest is like right here. And it's facing this way. Right? So we've got kind of a square going. Oh, man. I totally redid the drivers on my bamboo. And now my bamboo is all over the place on control. It's like super control bamboo now. Right, we got a box going this way for this mass, and the front is here going out like this, right? And then we've got her hips, which are pivoted slightly because she's rolling her hips out, which kind of go like this, and they're this way. And if we look at these masses, we actually can see like the top of this mass now, right? We can't see the top of this mass. We can't see the top of that mass. This mass is kind of actually like this way. But if we examine this now, we've got three boxes that look like that. Yeah, well, that didn't help me any at all. Let's try this. Let's go like this and draw a white box. So now what we've got is, in essence, three boxes that show pretty much where those three masses are. Yay, three masses! Yay! We're 12 minutes in, and what do we have? We've got three boxes. <laughs> but, uh, that's nice. On, on, hey, let's be in the right layer. On this mass, though, we are showing a... We're showing that we are pointed downward, though. That's an important thing. This mass is pointed down. It's aimed this way. Right? Bink! Turn that back on. So we're looking at these three masses like that. And what we do is we literally are going to transfer this same kind of function over at some point here. And we're just going to then check the other body parts on here and just register them. So we'll take a circle, right? And we'll say, well, here's a shoulder. I don't know, right? Oh, wow. Well, here's a shoulder. And um, here's a knee. There's a knee right here, too, I think. And um, the other shoulder is like right here. So it's going to be behind this mass and there's an elbow there. Good heavens, this elbow is like right in front of everything. Nice. And then I'll put a square for the hand, because yay, his hands are square. And square for the other hand here. And then we should probably like, you know, put a foot or something down here. And we're going to put a, a, a foot here to describe where that is. Now what we have, you know, I should just do this is a description of the position of her body. That's all we've done here, is just describe the position in space of her body. If we wanted to, and we were so inclined, we could draw the lines to indicate where that body went, right? Because we got like there, and there, and this arm is like doing all kinds of weird stuff like that, and just making my life miserable, and making you and me confused as to where that arm went, and stuff. And there's that arm, and there's this arm, and now we have a stick figure that describes where she is. And that is pretty much how a movable mass works. Now, we don't want to do, because, of course, none of us in the world of comics ever draws a direct trace, and the reason is because we don't have the same perspective. We don't ever use the same perspective. And if you do a direct trace, you can instantly tell somebody directly traced it because they all look flat and boring. 
And if you were to directly trace her, we'd be like, wow, she's like standing there going, oh, I'm so bored. I'm waiting for someone to just come along and hit me like I'm a statue or something. And it really does. It looks horrible. To boot, manga is like weirdly proportioned and strangely, bizarrely proportioned and everything like that. And so we don't do that. So what we do instead is we take, and we'll make another layer here, blue line. What, did you think I was actually using a tablet over here? Computer. That's so funny. Um, so we'll take over here, and we're going to do the same thing that we just did over here with tracing her, except we're not going to trace her, right? I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to say, I want the same movable masses. But I'm going to draw them over here. So I'm going to start with her chest. I know her chest is going this way. So I want her chest to go like this. I'm going to do the same thing. There's that movable mass, right? And then there's her hips. We know that, that her hips were going this way because we could see the top of her hips in that movable mass like this, right? And I'm going to exaggerate the pose a little bit because it's a comic book and we always exaggerate the poses in comic books. Because comic books, and that apparently is a thing in comic books, that we have to exaggerate the pose. So, we're going to do that. We're going to take this pose, and we're going to exaggerate it. So I've gotten her chest here. And this, this is her spine, right there. And it's still, it's the same thing, right? I've just exaggerated her chest and her hips. I pulled them apart, and instead of here and here, I'm exaggerating. Still got the point. The point's going to go up now because I'm exaggerating, and this point is going to go down now. And when the, the reason I'm doing this, by the way, this is a principle of actually Disney. Strangely enough, um, I recommend everybody read <coughs> this book, Drawn to Life by Walt Stanchfield. It's a book about how Disney does animation. And you'll note, he's not talking about Goofy. He's not talking about Mickey. He's talking about how to move people, how to make them have life. And this is what we're doing here. We're giving her movement and action. And to do that, we have grown as a culture to expect more flexibility out of things. So this kind of movement here, I would expect is going to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to actually move her hip down closer to the camera as well, like this. And I get to move this base unit. Now, it is easier to move this piece of her while I'm in this mode, right? Because now it's just a square. It's so easy to move just a box. I'm just moving a box. It's not, it's not scary. I'm not moving a human being around. I'm just moving a box, right? So I'm making the box more dramatic and I'm pushing it out and I'm pushing it out, right? So here I've got this box and I pushed it further I pushed it further. I pushed this guy a little further out here too, like this. Okay. And that's the chest, and that's the hips. Hips are still pointed down. Wee. And the chest is still pointed up more. So I've taken here, where we've got an arrow going out, and I've pushed it up. And I've taken the hips, and I've pushed it down. And we're just giving more action. She's going to be much more dynamic and moving a little bit further. And the chest probably could go stand to be a little higher, right? A little higher, guy. A little higher. Chest is probably two times the size of the hips. A little over twice the size of the hips, that chest box there. Now, 
what you're really seeing here is I have much more open area for the stomach going than I left here. In reality, if I were to switch to my other blue line, in reality, my box for the chest would probably end right about there, here, on this chest box. So there would be that right there. Okay, so let's, let's just correct that. Okay, now we're going to add her shoulders. Her shoulders are on this side are level, right? She's looking over this shoulder, but it's still back because this shoulder is still, no, it's rolled forward. It's not back. So we don't want to make that mistake. We don't want to screw that up because she wouldn't be back with that shoulder. She's rolled that shoulder forward. So if you're having a hard time with it, and you might be, I mean, it could be having a hard time with it. My advice is, and this is where I'm going to go with it, make it a box. Boxes are easy. We already know how to do boxes. We learn how to draw boxes. And if you don't know how to do boxes, then draw boxes. Practice drawing boxes, right? So I'm going to put a box in right here. This is going to represent her shoulder. Now, I don't know if you have noticed, but I've already rotated her about 10 degrees. So we've already turned her about 10 degrees towards the camera. So this foot is going to end up right here instead of right here. This foot's already going to end up right in front here in the camera. And that's because I've moved her around. And I'm turning her because I like the idea of her looking more towards me and less off to the right. So this box is going to be forefront instead of towards the back there. So there's her back and there's her shoulder. And that's where this shoulder is going to be rolled forward. And then her elbow, in this picture, her elbow is in line with her collarbone from our perspective. It's going to still be here-ish, but it's still going to be, it's going to be like right here now. I mean, we've got that point, and that's where it's going to be. So we put the elbow in with a the line. There's that line. There's the elbow. Here's the line. Here's the elbow. Then we've got this line to the hand. We've got this line to the hand, right? Since I've rotated her, I'm doing this. Now, I didn't mean to make this hard, and I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't my intention to make this hard. I rotated her by accident. I'm notorious for doing that. I, I don't like to use the, the, uh, the pose as they stand, so I tend to change them slightly. And so I have managed to rotate them. And actually, we're going to end up rotating her hand, too. But let's just, let's just make this not so difficult right now. Her other elbow and her other shoulder is now going to be eclipsed. So here is her other shoulder, right here. And her elbow is right here. We're gonna run the line. Stop helping me, Photoshop. Run the line. And run this line up like this. And run this line right here. Okay. So, wow, that's kind of complicated. What we really got is this guy's going to be here, like this. And there will always be adjustments. There will always be adjustments, my friends. There will always be adjustments. Here, here, here. This arm comes out. Now let's push it. This arm comes out. Now let's push it. Okay. So when I say push it, I'm pushing the design. Push that design out. And what I mean by that, what do you mean by that, guy? I mean push the design further out. Our arm is going to be way out here because I'm going to be really pushing that angle. Okay? The other mass that we are missing is her head. She's a headless samurai. She's the headless samurai. Poor headless samurai. And that's an important mass because actually I don't know where I'm going to put her head and I'm afraid her head probably to be cute would be right here. 
right? We'd want her head here. And if her head is here, then we're going to be pushing that like this. Her blade is going to go like this. Super dramatically, because everything has to be super dramatic. And we're pushing the blade like this. And there's her arm there. And now we're going to put her knee. Where's her knee? Her knee is like right here. And she doesn't have a lot of flex in that knee. So this is going to come out like this. And then like this. And we are off the frickin' page. Yay! I may have given her way too much leg. So, put that there, put that there, put the foot here, and this leg is bent here, to right there, to right there, put the foot there, and there's that knee right there, there's that knee right there, let's back up, there's that knee right there, there's that knee right there, There we go. So there we go. So now, with this whole skeleton, one of the things that I am noticing is I have more width than I do height. So what I'm going to really want to do is take this entire thing and squish it. That is a much more reasonable blue line right there. Okay. Now I've got this blue line. It's working really well. We're about 30 minutes into this drawing, um, but we've got some real dynamics. I've rotated her about, I'd say, 30 degrees from this original drawing. Okay. So we've taken that drawing, we've shown you where the movable masses are, and we've gone to blue line on an existing drawing here. And we've done pretty much the same critter here. Now we go in, and now that we have the underdrawing, as they call it, we're going to add the skeleton on top of it. Okay? So I add another line in, and I tend to call these ink lines, but the truth is I do two ink lines, and the reason I do two inks is because um, I very much go in with one ink line and then have to go back in invariably. There's always something I'm I'm messing up. And so here we go with zooming in and I apologize for all the zooming in because it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. Um, no, no, that is not in fact the color that I wish to have. Um, the color that I wish to have is this color. This is the color that I wish to have. So we're going to go in with, you know, here's a that go for this here there got to do this over like that we're going to come in like this and the crossed arms are really freaky so I'm doing them first cuz they're the part that really have me the most perplexed um, they're the part that's the most confusing so I want to do them first um, I really wish whoever had designed computer programs, things, had not, in fact, decided to do the, if you hold still long enough, it obviously means right mouse click, because what ends up happening is I end up more often than not getting my right mouse click function and not, in fact, holding the picture, which bothers me greatly. So this will help me then decide where the actual lines are of this character. 
which is what I'm looking for at this point. And this will be helpful for when I decide where this character's face is and stuff like that. Do de do de do. Now I'm actually going to define the chest area. So we're not going to see any of the actual chest itself, but we are going to see that, the stomach. I'm going to get this very dramatic sweep of the back, right? The reason we get this very dramatic sweep of the back is because of the way that that goes there. We go straight down into the crotch, and then we go up like this. Now, women have these wonderful hip bones right there. So you want to run right up on that. And there's the knee. No. Bad line. Bad. So the old proverb says that you have about 10,000 bad drawings in you. So don't let bad drawings kill you. Don't let them make you mad. Um, don't let them pester you. They're in you. You got to get them out. So get the 10,000 bad drawings out, and then you won't have to worry about it, right? I mean, they're just in you. They're going to be in you, and they just have to get out. So let them out. That's what you're going to do. That's what this is all about here, right? So what we've got here is this. Is going to be some of this is about anatomy for example she's raised her arm here you kind of have to know that this area here is going to be raised this muscle pops up it's called the deltoid and it pops up and comes around and it's going to bunch up on her right here you know that and that's just the way it goes right you also have to know that she's got an elbow right here, which makes this pointy. Now, I'm going to move this elbow, and I'll tell you why. We have what's called a converging tangent right there. A converging tangent is when two lines run into each other and give the viewer the wrong information. The information we were giving there was that this and her belly were all one thing. That's the wrong information. We do not want to give that information. They are not the same thing. It makes people very confused. So we wiped out one, we wiped out those two lines, and I moved her belly in and her elbow out to define better what that area looks like and get rid of that tangent, which is what I just did. So no more tangent. Right, then we come down here, we'll put in the calf right there. We put in the shoe right here, and yeah, it's a rough, who cares? Right, I don't care. So then we put in another calf through here. The calf has two different bulbous muscle groups on either side of the bone and the bone comes straight out of the bottom like that she's going to be standing crooked on it because of the way she was in the original drawing her foot is flat like this so the foot ends up being straight but the calf goes sideways, which is really, really, really weird. And it makes these muscles do funky things. Which, feel your muscles someday. That's exactly what happens down there. So now what I've done is, I've taken that exact same thing and saved the fact that her head is really wonky. Um, and that's what you get for not putting movable masses in. We didn't put her head in as a movable mass. So what we've got is, her head is declared weird, and it looks funky. funky. So, oh, unintentional lesson for the day is watch out for your movable masses up there, because we're going to have to go back in now and make a movable mass out of her head. Because, really, 
that just looks strange. And it's because everything else is declared by movable mass, but her head was not declared by a movable mass. And in fact, her feet aren't straight either and the movable masses. So we'll have to go work those out. So let's go in there and work this out. Her head first, because it's not a movable mass. Let's make it a movable mass so that it works. The head is a small movable mass. About half, that's about a third of the width. of the chest, right? So if we were to do that, that looks really funky. Don't do that. Do not do this. I am determined to tilt her head, and I don't think her head wants to tilt. I think I have put her hands in the way, and I think that part of the problem is I can't move her head because her hands are right there. I think she's trying to look into this area. And what the problem is, is that here, her head is straight. If we look at her head, it's straight up and down. She's not going anywhere. So when we've taken this original drawing, her hands have bulked up her, her sword so that it's right up on her face like this. So she can't lean in. There's no way to lean in. She's in up against her hands. There's nothing we can do. So what's going to have to happen is, we're just going to have to make that mass move exactly the way it is. And that is this way. All right, straight up and down. She's looking right over her shoulder like this. And that looks a whole lot better. If we do that, it fits. And so trying to fight the anatomy, it just won't work. If we put the neck in like this, we're just fighting the anatomy. Don't fight the anatomy. I think that's like the number one rule. And the thing that sucks about this is that means that we're not going to be able to see her eyes. Which means that if you were to make this into a production piece, I'd give up on it right now. Because you're going to end up with a picture where there's no eyes. And unless the character that you're drawing here is blind, or some way this is a clear crystal sword, and it is a you know sword of some kind of swordman's, and she sees through it, and you can somehow get her eyes through here in some way so you can see her eyes stop helping if you could see her eyes in some way through it which you can't stop helping you know there's no way to see her eyes through the sword so what's going to happen here is you either decide at this point that this is a waste and you've you've done the the angle wrong which you know hey sometimes that happens you're, you're 38 minutes into this drawing. This is a good time to decide this is a waste on this drawing. Or you decide that that's what you're after with this drawing. That's also plausible. I'm going to continue with this drawing because this is just instructional. And I don't care. This is instructional and I don't care. This is instructional and I don't care. This is instructional and I don't care. So I'll put hair on her.
and stuff like that. So, pretty much put her face in the exact same position as originally done. She's not actually looking in the same way, and actually it makes her look a little weird. So we're going to move her face over. Because if we were to, now looking at the two pictures side by side, I don't know if you saw it or not, her face actually would be right here. Even straight up. It's still blocked by the sword, but it wouldn't be out there. Boy, her sword's starting to look pretty ratty. It's like you chip chipping into it. <laughs> pretty ratty. Your sword's pretty screwed up, man. Just saying. She's like, screw you. I has a sword. And ratty swords still suck and give you tetanus. I have a tetanus sword. Sword of tetanus. So, moved her around so she's looking straight at us. And maybe she actually is looking under her sword. Maybe I can bring her face down. She's looking at us under the sword. So I'll bring her face down. And we'll look under the sword, and that may be a good fix for the sword in the way issue. Do to do to do do to do to do do to do do to do do to do. If you're wondering what the little crosshairs are, I just drew, and that's the eyes and face mid marks. Something that is common, commonly drawn amongst animators and comic artists. Gives us an idea of where the face is. I'm finding for those for those of you Photoshop people and or anybody who is working in the industry, I am finding myself drawing way too loosely because if I slow down, I start to get the oh you want to change your brush size thing. So now I draw way too fast and way too loose, and I can't draw slow and carefully at all. If I draw slow and careful, all I get is, you want to change your brush size? So I can't be careful anymore. You're, you're influencing my drawing habits and making me draw way too un in uncareful, in carefully. I don't know what way. Anyway, I'm just saying. Give her a nose. some eyes so she's looking evilly at you because she's got a sword and anyone with a sword is instantly evil. I say this after many years of kendo. Naturally I'm evil. There we go. Now we check the, the uh, anatomy again. Does her body align up? And this is where we want to check everything. We check, once again, can we get a good solid line through her spine? And I think we can. The other thing that we will do is take this and we'll say, image adjustments, no, 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 layer, and we'll go to Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where am I going? What are you doing? Transform. Edit. Transform. And we'll say flip horizontal. And the reason we do this is because everything looks right. And this is a something you can't do on pieces of paper, but you can do on the computer. And so if you're going to do it, do it. But you flip the drawing so that it, you can see whether it looks okay in the other direction or not. It looks fine. This is just a rough drawing, so I'm not that worried. But there you go, guys. It's been 45 minutes, and that's all I'm giving you on, like, basics 101. Now, the truth of the matter is, 
If you look at this picture, I'm going to give you a quick critique on what I'm doing wrong with this picture. Okay, so let's go for the red here. First of all, this much dramatic dynamics on the foot, I should have much more dramatic dynamics on this elbow, and I don't. So I would want this elbow to be more like out here. That's where I'm going to want that elbow. Like really seriously, out here. That's where I'm going to want that elbow. I'm going to push that elbow out. And I mean it when I push that elbow out. And then when I do that, I'm going to want this sword. Like, seriously, this is a menacing weapon. It is menacing you. You are making it mad. It is making you mad. You should be very mad. And if so, then you just want to make sure you check her hips. Because you are now seriously looking at dynamics here. If this is the way this is, she is in your personal space. And you want to make sure it looks like that. There you go. So this is the red pin version of this. Let's turn the opacity down so you can see what I'm talking about from where we were. So that's what we're doing. That would be my my critique on my own picture. Um, you know, 45 minutes in. So there's some work we got to do here. I mean, there's stuff we got to put in. It's still another 45 minutes to an hour before we're even at a point where I'd call it a safely inkable pic picture. Um, and then that would be pretty good. Inking probably would go smooth. So you're looking at two hours into this piece, maybe three. But this is an 11 by 17 full up, so that's not bad. Three hours in, not bad. So there you go, that's Drawing 101 from Grumpy Dude. Maybe I'll be less grumpy next time. So, and maybe this recorded this time. And until then, get off my lawn and then come back and get back on my lawn for the next one. Talk to you later.